Praise the Lord. The Lord is good and His mercy is endure forever. The Lord say, Come unto me, all you who labor and help me that will be referred. Thank you, Lord, for the rescuing to us. We are great lovers of Israel. In Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. Now that new day that God has made, we are rejoicing and glad in it. I want to bless and magnify your holy name. Joe, I want to glorify your name. Joe, I want to magnify your name. I want to bless you because from the rising of the sun to the going down the same, your name is to be praised. We thank you because there is none like you. You are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that walketh in the wings of wind. The one that said, Come unto me, all ye who labor under heaven, I give you rest. I thank you, Lord, for rest you give to us, Lord God of Israel, in Jesus' name. To you, Lord, come to worship you. We join the angels in heaven to worship you. They sense all over the whole world. We join the Christians all over the whole world that are calling upon your name in purity and those souls are pure. To call upon your name in truth and in death. Father, Father, bless us for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because our friends are partnered before you, Lord, who will hear this word, who will join us today, and who will glorify them. Father, take, our, take your glory and Jesus' your name and let your name glorify in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we are going to be looking at Psalm 72 to 76. And the topic here, truly, the Lord is good to those who hearts are pure. Truly, the Lord is good to those who hearts are pure. May God help us in Jesus' name. Today, the Lord is looking for men and women whose hearts are pure and who will truly serve Him, who will truly love Him, who will truly fear Him. Today, we are living in a world that is full of sin, deprivation, and so many evil things. But the Lord knows those who are His. Any man or woman that calls upon God in purity and says to her, they are never left alone. So today, we are going to say, Father, hear our word, hear our prayer, and let our worship, our Bible to not be vain in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, look into your word, we invite the Holy Spirit, the great teacher, that will teach us to understand it. Brothers and sisters, when we hear the word and he knew that it's going around the whole world, it is heart wrenching and it's very sad. Because there are so many evil things that are going on around the whole world. And the sad part of this is that most people claim to be religious. And they're religious, but they're still doing a lot of evil things. The Lord is good to those whose hearts are pure. If your heart is pure, then the, 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 Lord, the, 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 the Lord will then answer your prayer. You want God to bless you, let your heart be pure. You want, your, you want God to bless you, let your heart be pure. I don't know where you are getting the word from today. We are living in a challenging time. And because we live in a challenging time, what you need to do is truly to fear God and to do God's will. And one thing I love about God, God does not fight with multitude. And you only fight with those who hearts are pure with Him and who are sat right towards Him. May God help us in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, take your Bible and go to Exodus. No, sorry, go to Psalm twenty, Psalm seventy-two. Give your love of justice to the King, O God, and righteousness to the King's Son. Give your love of justice to the King, O Lord, O God. And righteousness to, to the king's son. Help you judge your people in the right way and let the poor always be treated fairly. May the mountain yield prosperity for all and may the hill be fruitful. Help him to defend the poor, to rescue the children of the needy and to crush their oppressors. May they fear you as long as the sun shines and as long as the moon remains in the sky, yes, forever. May the king's rule be refreshing like spring rain on freshly cut grass, like the shower that water the earth. May all the godly flourish during his reign. May there be abundant prosperity until the moon is no more. May he rain from sea to sea and from the Euphrates river to the ends of the earth. Desert normal will bow before him. His enemy will fall before
Ophoni in the dust. The western kings of the Tashis and other distant lands will bring tribute. The eastern king of Sheba and Saba will bring gifts. All kings will bow before him. All nations will serve him. He will rescue the poor when they cry to him. He will help the oppressed who have no one to defend them. He feels the pity for the weak. He feels pity for the weak and the needy. And he will rescue them. He will redeem them from oppression and violence. From their lives are for their lives are precious to him. Long live the king. May the, may the gold of Shiva be given to him. May the people always pray for him and bless all and bless him all day long. May there be abundant grain throughout the land, flourishing even on the hilltop. May the fruit tree flourish like the trees of Lebanon. And they bring, they bring, may the people strive like grass in the field. May the king's name endure forever. May he continue as long as the sun shines. May all nations be blessed through him. And bring him, bring him praise. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does such wonderful things. Praise his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with the glory. Amen and amen. May God bless the word in Jesus' name. This end the prayers of David, son of Jesse. You see that God is very concerned about the poor, the oppressed, the needy. That's why when people, when people are in government or in office, in political office, they think they own the whole world. They actually are in God's heart. If you want God to bless you in any position you ha have, you must have a fear of God. If you don't have the fear of God, then God's judgment will come upon that. When you look at the whole world today, you look at what is going on, even in this country, you are hearing a lot of shooting every day. The first question you ask yourself, why would somebody who has the fear of God look at his fellow human being and not have pity and pick up a gun and shoot them? Why would somebody who has the fear of God just shoot a bomb into another country and kill innocent people who have never offended you, you don't even know them? Why would somebody who has the fear of God be treating workers poorly, you give them minimum wages. So, but these people think they are powerful. Why, do, why would the politicians be telling lies? They know it's a lie. They themselves know they are telling lies. But they are saying it over and over. And they say, oh, we are religious people. But the passage we are studying today, and the topic said, God is good to those whose hearts are pure. Is your heart pure? Pure heart is meaning you don't assume evil, you don't do evil. You stay away from evil. The world we are living today is so sad. When people see evil, they rejoice. People are doing evil things. They have no fear of God. They have no regard for their fellow human being. But God is saying He's going to judge them. He's going to punish them and going to make their life miserable. You may ask me, Pastor Masha, how is God going to make their life miserable? Good question. Because somebody has money, doesn't mean the person is going to be is going to enjoy his life. You know, I always say money is an illusion. When you have this money, oh, you think I'm rich, I'm powerful, I can acquire all this material thing. Now, brothers and sisters, let us stop there. Now, let us look at the whole scheme of things. Let us assume you have the whole world, you have all the riches in the whole world. Then one day you are going to die. When you die, what happened to those money? So why would you want to kill yourself? Why would you want to cheat? Why would you want to do evil things to get those money? When you know the money is not going to benefit you at the long last. You know when we are when we are heavy, we put on nice clothes, we live in a nice house, we drive a nice car, we think we are on top of the world. But what if you become sick tomorrow? Eventually, the end will come, the person will die. All those things you have done that were evil, you will stand before God. 
You know, when I was reading about uh, Hitler, I read about Hitler. Hitler was not a good student. He was going to, go to he wanted to be a pastor. He was, he was successful in being a pastor. Then he wanted to be an artist. He went to the artist school. He was, he was not successful. He was very rebellious, very stubborn, rebellious young man when he was young. Finally, he was planning to do a lot of evil. And he was caught, arrested, and sent to jail. And while he was in jail, he started planning on how to punish the Jewish people. He said, well, the reason I'm not successful because of the Jewish people. If the Jewish people were not here in Germany, I would be successful. You see how people plan evil? From there, he started in the prison, he started writing a book how to make German to be very pure and how to get rid of the Jewish people. Well, he was just a crazy guy, he's not going to succeed. So he left the prison, he joined the military, and just as oddly, a lower rank officer. Before he realized it, he started influencing others. Influencing others. Like joke, 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 joke. He started influencing others. Before he realized it, he joined a political party. And he now says his aim is to kill the Jews. He tells like, people, they say, well, this guy just created, let's just support him to gain office. When he gain office, you're going to remove him. He will not see that. He doesn't have no power. When he joined the office and started killing other political opponents, just like Donald Trump, he will be saying all trash of trash thing. We have to clean German. We have to clean this area. These people are bad. The Mexicans are rapists. The black people are assholes. People thought he was just, he's just joking. People laugh. You know, the sad part, I listen to a lot of black people who are supporting Donald Trump. I'm saying, do you guys listen to what he's saying? Or do you read history? For most people never read history. When you read the world history, American history, you're going to find that you don't joke with, you don't joke with people who are, doing, who are doing evil. So anyway, the man that started trying to acquire other nations was aspiring to conquer other nations. And American first of all said, we're not going to get involved in the European problem, let them do it. But at the end of the day, get what? Hitler was killed. And his life was miserable. So every other person that has to be like Hitler, even today in this country around the world, they are going to die like that. We must learn that this world does not belong to us. And every person that is planning evil, evil will be for them. So we have to be very careful. Psalm 73, he said, truly, God is good to Israel, to those whose hearts are pure. But as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping, and I was almost gone, for I envied the proud when I saw them prosper despite their wickedness. I don't think it has happened to you. I talked to some people when I was here in Nigeria as a pastor. You always tell me, pastor, well, when I was not a pastor, when I was not a Christian, my life was already, especially ladies, when I was not a Christian, I, I, I miss a lot. When I was not a Christian, I, I used to have this. I said, Sister, listen, you were living in death. You were not living a life. You were dead while you were alive. Those things you were doing, all those men that were giving you money, they were using you. They were not actually helping you. I said, Don't look at your immediate benefit, look at the long run. The long run I'm looking is the life after you, the seed you sow, how it's going to affect your children, your grandchildren, and your great grandchildren. So I show her the book of Exodus. How God said the same we do will affect us, our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, up to the fourth generation of those that hate God, underline the world, those that hate God. So if you hate God, if you hate God, your children hate God. They are, they are going to hate God, the same sin will continue. But if they change, say, oh, my parents or my mother was bad, I didn't like what she was doing, I repent, I confess the sin. The, the, the cause will not come upon them. So then I will tell them. So, but as a Christian, we have to be very careful that we are not being influenced by what other people are doing. But it's very easy to be influenced. You see these people, you know, if you listen to the news, this, uh, this, this uh, PPP loan that SD was giving, and government was giving. I don't know if we were taking the money, I don't need it. And I happened to see a lot of things and I wasn't happy. I said, this is crazy. This is not a good system. But now they're not saying they make a mistake. 
that it was not a good system. So the question there is, when we're very careful, what we do? And I said, I'm going to start pushing people, looking for them, people that took the loan, and of course, they're going to put them in jail, they have to pay the money back, and they're going to start going back after people have spent the money. You find that when they were taking the money, you will only be tempted. You know, we have a non-profit organization, we are fully registered, we are tax exempt organization, just like, just like any other organization. They were sending me email also, come apply for a loan, come and take money. The, 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 the non-profit organization group I belong to, they were all calling me, please apply for the loan. We are trying to get so so amount of money. Uh, all of us can share, can apply to be a part of the share. I didn't apply, so I don't need it. Because it is very easy to look at other people and be deceived. So, but he said, he said, but as for me, I almost lost my footing. You know, like me, you are falling. My feet were slipping. I was almost gone. For I envy the proud. When I saw them prosper, despite their wickedness, they seem to live such painless life. Their bodies are so heavy and strong. They don't have troubles like other people. They are not plagued with problems like everyone else. They wear, they, they, they wear pride like a jewel necklace and clothe themselves with cruelty. These fat cows have everything. Their heart could, their heart could wish, their, their heart could ever wish for. Their heart could have whatever they wish for. They scoff and speak only evil. In their pride, they seek to crush others. They post about the, they post about, they post against the heaven, the very, the, the very heavens, and their words stunt throughout the earth. Can I go ahead, verse ten. Verse ten. And so the people are dismayed and confused, drinking in all their words. What does God know? They ask. Does the Most High even know what's happening? Look at these wicked people enjoying like if ease, enjoying life of ease while their riches multiply. Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reasons? I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every money brings me pain. If I had really spoken this way, to others, I would have been a traitor to your people. So I tried to understand why the wicked prosper, but what a difficult task it is. Then I went into your sanctuary, O oh God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. Truly, you put them on a slippery path and sent them sliding over the cliff to destruction. In an instant, they are destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. When you arise, O Lord, you will laugh at their silly ideas, as a person laughs at dreams in the morning. Then I realized that my heart was bitter and I was all torn up inside. I was so foolish and ignorant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. Yet, I still belong to you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My head may fail. My spirit may grow weak. But God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Those who desert him will perish, for you destroy those who abandon you. But as for me, how good it is to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my shelter, and I will tell everyone about the wonderful things you do. The word of the Lord. Thank be to God. You see, here is a man of God. Like what is going on in the whole world today. You go to the church, you are faithful, 
you do everything you're supposed to do, you read your Bible, but you look at people that don't, that they may be going to a church but they don't know God. You know what they are doing. They are doing evil thing, they are stealing, they are cheating, they are doing bad things. But you see that nothing evil happened to them. They are enjoying their life. Everything goes well with them. You begin to ask yourself, God, why? This guy does not mean does not have no respect for God. His sight is evil. You say, God, why? What is this, God? I'm suffering. I'm serving you. I go to church. I pay my tithe. I give my offering. I fast. I pray. But why is this like this? I think I need to be like this people too. I think I need to change. I need to be doing bad things. Hence, this is what you say, but you took me to the sanctuary, to the house of God, and you showed me the end of these wicked people. Eh? When you see the end, you say, oh my God, this is the end of these wicked people. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to be like them. Brothers and sisters, it is very easy to do evil or to be discouraged when things don't go right. You say, oh God, why am I suffering? God, why? Why me? Why me? Why me? God, why? God said, relax. The man said, I almost fall off. My heart, my leg was almost slippery. You know, when it's snow, when it, when there's snow, I don't know if you are trying to step out from your door and you jump all over forward. During the snow here that day, when we're trying to drive the car, the car will be moving backward. The car will be going backward. I say, oh, oh what, is good? what is wrong with this car? Car, why are you moving backward? The car is moving backward. This car is moving backward. This car is moving backward. That is how this guy's leg was almost falling because he looking at this other hippo. But he said, when I saw their end, when I saw their end, you know, most people don't look at the end. You know, the end is, this guy have got this money illegally. He has cheated people. He has killed people. He has do bad things. But he's not looking at the end. Pastor, what is the end? Oh, oh. Why are you asking me that question? Huh? You should know the end. Why well, don't I want to know? You want to know? I'll tell you. The end is that when the man finally died or the woman died, is he going to take the money with him? All that he has schemed, cheated to acquire, he's not taking nothing with him. What? Why was this guy so laboring and so crying and so busy day and night? He doesn't sleep. You know, it's like a, a, a higher servant. A higher servant working in the farm. He said, oh, this is my big farm. I own this farm. We are higher hands. All the property we have, all the money we have, all the gold we have, all the jewelry we have does not belong to us. What? They are my own. They are not your own, my brother, my sister. It is not. You are just but a borrower, a day you are going to leave them behind. And you will stand before God. And God will say, how have you lived your life? You remember what he told the 72? He said, the king took care of the poor, the oppressed, the orphan, those who are needy. What is your love to God? Are you telling us about Jesus? Do you have love in your heart for God? Do you daily confess your sin? Are you repenting? Are you discouraged because of the present condition of your life? This is what the psalmist was saying. He said, my feet was almost slippery. I don't know if you have been there. Sometimes when things are tough, you say, God, why? Ah, God, why now? Why me? Relax. Remember Job? Remember we studied the book of Job? Job said, God, what have I done wrong? But this psalmist is saying, my feet was almost slippery. Please don't let your foot slip because this world is not our home. You know, there was a, a 15 years old boy in a Connecticut or so. And this guy just took arrow 15. This machine gun. 15 years old boy. Just imagine 15 years old. My son is 14 years. He's not 15 yet. Can you imagine a 15 years old boy pick up a gun? Went to the street. These are innocent people. They don't. They, they have not committed any offense. They, they, they didn't cause anybody. They didn't. They didn't fight with anybody. They didn't do any. They were just walking on their own. They are doing exercise. They are walking on the train on the like you will walk. 
some brothers and sisters will be here. We we'll work together sometime. We, we, we have a, a work out here. I used to go to a very far place. We are walking around in the bush area. I told my I said, I don't like this area. It's a bush park. Somebody can hide here and shoot somebody. I said, I don't like it. I don't want to come here no more. I said, I want to stay where everybody can see me. I can see people. If somebody is trying to harm you, can go to see who's trying to harm you. This guy went there and started shooting people randomly. He even killed one police officer. I said, why? And these people say they are Christians. They are religious people. But when you look at them, your heart is almost failing. And when you look at them, they have big houses. They have a big car. They have a, a, a big bank account. That machine gun is it carry. It's not cheap. Go and find out. It's about $8,000. Those bullets are very expensive. I look at it online and say, why would somebody invest such money for what? We're not in the state of war. But some politicians say, gun is not a problem. Some politician in your state, in your country, in your village, some politician in your party, say, yeah, gun is not a problem. It is people that have mental problem. Is it today in America who have people with mental problem? Why will you kill innocent people? Over the time, I think, why? 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 That's what the Samuel was saying. Say, God, why are the evil people prospering? They tend to have big bank accounts, everything go well with them. But here I am, I'm serving you. Why is that it? He said, I had to go to the sanctuary and look at the end. And God will punish them. The punishment is not just in this world. There's a hellfire. Hellfire is not preached today. Don't change, don't be a hellfire. Hellfire is real. Whether you like it or not, hellfire is what? It's real. People will go to hellfire. I don't care whether you believe it or not. You don't have to believe. Your belief does not change anything. What is good, God is going to do, God is going to do it. God, God created us to be kind, to be like Him, to show kindness to the poor, the orphan, the widow, those who cannot help themselves, and to be nice to each other. But if you not think you're an evil man, you want to do evil thing, you wait for God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. So He said, but as for me, how good it is to, to, to be near to God. I have made the sovereign God my shelter. Have you made God your, your shelter? If you have not made God your shelter, you are in trouble. Because when the rain is falling, where are you going to run to? I think, uh, was it uh, Sonny Okosu or one of the musicians? He said, you wicked man, where are you going to run to? Or somebody is singing, you wicked guy, where, where are you going to run to? When trouble comes, when, when there is something on the judgment day, where are you going to run to? A judgment day is coming. What we do is God, what God is going to reward us for is going to punish your brothers and sisters. I don't know what you are doing. I don't know what you are going through, but Lord know what you are doing. Don't be deceived. May God help us in Jesus' name. Where you go on to, oh cinema. Where you go on to, oh cinema. Where you go on to. Don't get discouraged. Life does not want it. 
But it's good to be successful. I don't have no problem. I like a nice house, nice furniture, nice car. I went to school. I have my MBA. I tell my children, I say, I have an MBA. I want to have a PhD. Don't just come. Don't just be successful with MBA. I want to be more successful than me. I pray for them every day. I say, God, my children will be more successful than me. Those things are good, but you have to do it with the fear of God. Do it with the fear of God. Don't do it to cheat. Don't do it and try to say, oh, I'm going to cheat. Wherever you find yourself, God has a position for you. He may be, you know, some people become early. They are early, early successful. But it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the greatest work is to know God. The God of Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Let us look at 74. Psalm 74. Oh God, why have you rejected us so long? Why is your anger so intense against the sheep of your own pasture? Remember that we are the people you chose long ago, the tribe you redeemed as your own special possessions. And remember Jerusalem, your home here on earth. Walk through the awful rims of the city. See how the enemy has destroyed your sanctuary. There your enemies shouted their victory, victorious battles cries. There they set up their battle standards. They swung their asses like woodcutters in a forest. With asses and pigs, they smashed the carved Panel. They burned your sanctuary to the ground. They defied the place that bears your name. Then they thought, let's destroy everything. So they burned down all the places where God was worshipped. We no longer see your miraculous signs. All the prophets are gone, and no one can tell us when it will end. How long, O oh God, will you allow our enemies to insult you? Will you let them dishonor your name forever? Why do you hold back your strong right hand? Unleash your powerful fist and destroy them. You, O oh God, are my king from ages past, bringing salvation to the earth. You, sp- you split the sea by your strength and smash the heads of the sea monster. You crush the heads of Leviathan and let the desert animals eat him. You cause the springs and streams to gush forth and you dry up rivers that never run dry. Both day and night belong to you. You made the starlight, the starlights, and the sun. You set the boundaries of the earth, and you made both summer and winter. See how these enemies insult you, O Lord. A foolish nation has dishonored your name. Don't let this white beast destroy you. Total dose. Don't forget your suffering, people, forever. Remember your covenant promises. For the land is full of darkness and violence. Don't let the downtrodden be humiliated again. Instead, let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, O God, and defend your cause. Remember how these fools insult you all day long. Don't overlook what your enemies have said or their growing uproar, the word of the Lord. Thank be to God. You know, sometimes as a human being, even as a Christian, we all get to that position in life where we think, oh, why is God forgetting me? Maybe you don't have a job, maybe you are sick, maybe you have one problem or the other. Say, God, why? God, why? That is the enemy. Remember the tough or in the military, call it the fifth column. Remember the fifth column? The fifth column is the enemy within. The fifth column is the enemy. And this fifth column, they disguise themselves as your friend, but they are enemy. 
That is the devil. The devil may come to you, even in your thoughts. It could be your friend, it could be your brother, it could be your sister. They'll be taunting you. Say, oh, Sibir, you serve God. Where is your God now? Where is your God? Tough time do not last. Tough people do. This guy said, God, don't let them destroy your name. Don't let them destroy your sanctuary. You are the temple of God. You are the sanctuary of God. Any man that tries to destroy you, any woman that tries to destroy you, God will destroy them. All you have to do is hold on to God. I say it over and over. I have so many challenges. No people have challenges, they are running from house to house, from place to place, from church to church, from friend to friend. I don't do that. I have challenge, I just wait on God. I say, God, unless you help me, no man can help me. It's only God. It doesn't mean I cannot tell people to pray for me. I tell brothers and sisters, the Bible says, one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand, three shall chase a hundred thousand, four shall chase one million, and five shall chase ten million. So it's better for us to join together and pray for the effective future prayers of a righteous people availeth much. So this guy said, God, what is going on? Don't let your enemies say, but don't let them go free. Attack them, destroy them, punish them. That is very true anytime, any day, anywhere, all over the whole world. Joe friends were attacking him. They said, Joe must have seen. That's why he was suffering. We don't know how long Joe was suffering for, but at the end of the day, God reward him. God knows how to reward everybody. God knows how to reward everybody. If you truly, truly serve the Lord very well, tough time do not last. I don't care what you are going through today. God is able to meet your needs. So this guy is saying, God, why are you abandoning us? Why are you not able to destroy your name? Where is the miracle we hear about before? The miracles are still there. Because you are sick today, you are going to be sick tomorrow. Because you are poor today, you are going to be poor tomorrow. Whatever you are going through today is only but a phase. But even, even then, this world is not our home. The greatest joy you can have is to hear, God is telling me something. No people never hear from God. God tell me do this. God tell me do that one. Divine Grace and National Ministry goes to prepare families that will hear God's voice and do God's will. Our goal is not to have a big church, a big cathedral, a big mansion, to have a private jet, to ride the most expensive car, that's not the goal. As God bless us, we want to bless others also. One family at a time, one after the other, as the water covers the sea, and the whole family of the earth will be rich. That's our goal. Are you serving God? Don't get discouraged. May God help us in Jesus' name. God will never abandon you. God will never abandon you. I don't care what you are going through today. God is able to meet your need. May God help us in Jesus' name. Psalm 75. Praise the Lord. We thank you, O God. We give thanks because you are near. People everywhere tell of your wondrous deeds. God says all the time, I have planned, I will bring justice against the wicked. When the earth quakes and these people live in turmoil, I am the one who keeps its foundation firm. I warn the pride, stop your boasting. I told the wicked, don't raise your fist. Don't rise, don't raise your fist in defiance at the heavens, or speak with such arrogance. For no one on earth, from east to west, or even from the wilderness, should raise a defiant fist. It is God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. Hallelujah. For the Lord holds a cup in his hands that is full of foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours out the wine in judgment, and all the wicked must drink it, draining it to the dregs. But as for me, I will always proclaim what God has done. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob, for God says, I will break the strength of the wicked, but I will increase the power of the godly, the word of the Lord. Thank you to God. So the question there is, the question here today is, how is the wicked rewarded? How are the wicked getting free with it? The only but a short while. God said, I will break their strength. I will show them they are nothing. 
You know, as a human being, we think we are powerful, we are rich, but God is in the church. He said, turn away from evil, fear the Lord, serve the Lord, obey the Lord, do God's will, and watch God reward you. God is able to bless you much more than you think. And man's life does not consist of the abundance of things that he possesses. It's not the material thing that makes us a Christian. You know what I hear some pastors say, oh, if you're a Christian, just pray, God will answer your prayer and give you one million dollars. I say, no, we are not, it's not because of money we are serving God. We don't serve God because of the blessing, material blessing. If that is the only reason, Paul said we have all men most miserable. People that don't serve God, they are very rich. Because they are rich, doesn't mean they know God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Today, God is calling every one of us to put our trust and confidence in Him because He's able to meet anybody. Wicked people, they will never go unpunished. They may look successful temporarily, but their judgment is going to come. And when they come, it will fall hard. God will put, put judgment upon every man or woman that have done evil who have not repented from their wicked ways. Unless you repent, every unwicked, every wicked person will be punished. No righteous man or woman will ever go free. Initially, they look they are going free, but they are not. God is able to punish. You know how to reward every man according to their deeds in Jesus' name. So today's topic is saying, God knows how to God bless those whose heart are, whose heart are good. If your heart is good, the Lord knows how to reward you. But if your heart is not good, the Lord also knows how to punish. So the topic, the, the, the topic we are looking at is said. Truly, Lord is good to those whose heart are pure. Every man or woman that have a pure heart, God knows how to reward it. And God is good to all of us. And if, if, if it's not good to you right now, because of this, it, it seems it's not like it's not good. It seems like it's not good because of the present circumstances. God is able to meet your need. That's what I have known from my childhood. S Psalm 76. Psalm 76. The, go, go, God is honored in Judah. His name is, is great in Judah. Jerusalem is where he lives. Mount Zion is his home. There he has broken every, he has broken the fiery arrows of the enemy, the shade and the sword and the weapons of war. You are glorious and more majestic than the everlasting mountains. Verse 5. Our boldest enemy have been plundered. They lie before us in the sleep of death. No warrior could lift a hand against us. At the blast of your breath, O God of Jacob, their horses and chariots lay still. No wonder you are greatly feared. Who can stand before you when your anger explodes? From heaven, you sentence your enemies. The earth trembled and stood silent before you. You stand up to judge those who do evil, O oh God, and to rescue the oppressed of the earth. Human defiance only enhances your glory, for you use it as a weapon. Make vows to the Lord your God and keep them. Let everyone bring tribute to the awesome one. For, the, for he breaks the pride of princes, and the king of the earth fear him. The word of the Lord. Thank you to God. The question there is, God knows how to reward every man. Every, those that think they are rich, they are powerful, God knows how to reward them. He knows how to break their power. Those that think they are rich, God knows how to humble them. And those who are evil, God knows how to humble them. He knows how to give them judgment. He knows how to give them the cup of judgment for them to drink. What he's saying here is say, repent before God gets angry, before he strike, before he releases his chest and a weapon of war. Today God is calling every one of us. Call upon the Lord. Repent. Turn away from wicked way. Once you do that one, then you'll be blessed. So this the topic we say today is say, truly God is good to those who are pure. Is your heart pure? If your heart is pure, you have no Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You daily confess your sin. You read your Bible. You tell us by Jesus. You don't be you, you don't be discouraged by what the present circumstances that is going on. Whatever is going on right now, when you hear the word all over the whole world, there is war, there is fighting, there is there is deception, there is killing, 
there are so many things, but God is in charge. The Bible is saying, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heaven, I'll give you rest. Because give us the grace to fear him, to love him, to obey him, to do his will. So that at the end, at the end, we have eternal reward where we live for, with God forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're going to stop here today. Next week, by the grace of God, we are going to stop, we're going to start from 77, Psalm 77. We study the Bible verse by verse, line by line, chapter by chapter. Our goal is to please God, to do God's will. This is what is our hope. Let us pray. Today is uh, on Monday, it's going to be uh, Dr. Fina's uh, uh, son's birthday, Joshua. He's going to be 13 years old. January 17. Uh, no, sorry, October 17. It's going to be, wow, 17. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow, the Joshua. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm thinking of Joshua. Joshua is 1717. Yes, our Joshua here is November 17. And uh, jo jo Joshua is 17. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Wow. And then the doctor of course, yeah, the doctor of all of them, they said he might not be able to work, you know, he might have a lot of deficits and all of that. They have so, now so everything so perfect. So so we all know that God, he, you know, I mean, if God does not say so, he will never come to pass. Yes. So, Joshua, Joshua, you will live long. You will fulfill your days. Evil will not take you. Sickness will not take you. The day that God has assigned for you, God will, God will fulfill it for you in the name of Jesus Christ. As you have a heart attack, as your mother have a heart attack, God, to love God, to love Jesus, and, and make a lot of contribution to the ministry. Father, Father, God, God has saved Joshua from the mother's home, even when he was three months, three months old. Father, the purpose you have for Joshua may be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Every contrary spirit I want to fight against this child, whether in the land, whether in the sea, whether in the air, we use the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to destroy that power right there in Jesus' name. But the authority invested in me as Christ representative, I say, Joshua, you will live. You will fulfill your day. You are going to have a lot of children. And you are going to have so many children. People will say, wow, you see that child? It was really child of the mother. Look at how great the child has become. Father, so shall it shall be in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and we declare, Joshua, you shall live. You shall not die. Jehovah God has created you. We cause you to live. And we fulfill your days in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 6 and 3, our days shall be 120 years. We declare and decree, so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. The God of Israel, your mother has come to rely on. May that God of Israel reward you. May he bless you. May he, may he give you the grace. Even as your excellent and your academics, you will be excellent in all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Terrorists will not know you. Poverty will not know you. Sickness will not know you. Disease will not know you. We join our faith together to say, God, as you have been with Joshua from the mother's womb, hold him, uphold him, strengthen him, and give him all grace and mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. But I will thank you because it is done. All of us on the line here today, and those who will hear this testimony later on by way of social media, by way of YouTube, internet, Facebook, and other Father, we have to bless all of them. And we join our faith together to say, Joshua is blessed. Joshua is blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers, and, brothers and sisters, I want to, want to thank every one of you. 
for joining us today to celebrate Joshua's birthday. We are grateful for Joshua. We thank God for his life. We just say God, thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray for other people. We have a, 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 new, a new prayer to the general. We have a Aaron. He's an Olympian. We ask God to bless him and to reward him with eternal life and to open the door for him. Financial door. That, but God said, I'm the one that opened the door. Nobody can close. I made the heaven and earth. Father, give him, open, give him the open door. Father, we general our faith together. We say, Aaron, you are blessed. You are going out in blessed. Your, 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 your company is blessed. Every contrary spirit that is against you, we use the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to destroy every power that is against you in the name of Jesus Christ. God of Abraham will bless you. God of Isaac will bless you. Through you, nations of the earth will come to glorify God. And by your, your the Jehovah God will make you a great man in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that laugh with you, those that laugh at you shall laugh with you. In the name of Jesus, we decree you shall rule this nation. Jehovah God shall bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Evil shall not befall you. Accident shall not befall you. Disease shall not befall you. Every man or woman that is engaged in you, for your sake, as some of them that say, say, in the name of Jesus Christ. We prophesy, we say, Aaron, we say, Aaron, we prophesy unto you. We say, you are blessed. Your goodness is blessed. Your community is blessed. The work of your hand is blessed. You are God, you are God whom you are come to reconcile him. We say that you are God will bless you. In the name of Jesus. We say it is done. It is done. It is done. Because you ask and believe. In Jesus' name. Uh, thank God for Dr. Fina. We are grateful for the testimony. We thank God for Dr. Fina. Most more, more miracle to, to Joshua and more, more blessing to this family in the name of Jesus Christ. We say it is done. It is done. We say that the financial need to be a great grandmother and her day will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. But I will thank you. It, it is done. It is done. Because we ask something. We pray for all the brothers and sisters of today. We pray for. We pray for. Uh, we pray for. We, we, we pray for. As, 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 as Sister, uh, Sister Emily, uh, Sister Beta, and uh, to, uh, uh, Brother Valentine, and uh, Kena, the, bro- the, the husband, and uh, my wife and I, and uh, we ask God to be with every one of us. And those who hear this one, Sister Beta, those who will hear this one later on, that God, that will be with those who are not able to join us today. Because of work or because they travel one day, Father, I ask you to be with all of them in Jesus' name. Father, all this family have prayed for Lord. Meet their needs. Brother Martin, that God will bless you. God will meet your name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jehovah God, who we come to serve, will be our reward. We will never suffer lack. Our goodness shall be blessed. Our coming shall be blessed. We are people who are suffering. Jehovah God will open the door for us. The nation will favor us. We favor our children. Our children will rule this land. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare, we declare that the, their day will be fulfilled. Terrorists will not know them. Accident will not know them. Poverty will not know them. As they travel day and night, evil will not be for them. In the name of Jesus. Father, we say, so shall it be. But I pray for myself. I say, I am made over the blood of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I want you guys to pray for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray for, pray for me that God will do what He has for me. God has the plan for my life. Let us pray for Pastor Bansha. In his cup, Lord, we lift him up. Come on. Seek and we will find. Father, you have caused 
this your servant to be your own. Father, today, with the congregation you have given him to build and to hear your word and do your will and with all the faith all over the face of the earth, Father, in a prayer of agreement with each pastor Marshall before you today, that whatever be those his heart desire, that the Spirit of God has given him liberty to say, pray for me, for the foundation of his life to the very top. We speak life in the name of Jesus. Amen. We fight the, the risen Messiah, that by that power of the risen Messiah, that most Christ from death, we restore you, Pastor Masha, for the foundation of your life to the very room in the name of Jesus. Amen. That everything that bears your name receive life today. Yeah, receive yeah. deliverance. Yeah. Receive upliftment. Receive disentanglement from the power of the entanglement in the name of Jesus. Amen. Feelings like love. Because you are the only one that has power to break and to mold. Yes, we need it all. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for America. Please remain here. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for Ukraine. Pray for Jerusalem. Pray for Nigeria. Pray for Ghana. Pray for that country represented here. Cameroon. Every other country represented here. That peace will reign. In the name of Jesus. Peace will reign, Lord of Israel. Peace will reign in our home. Peace will reign in our family. Peace will reign in our lives. In the name of Jesus. We say it is done. It is done. It is done. Because we ask and believe in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, I want to thank every one of you for joining us this morning. We ask God to bless you, to reward you. Your labor is not in vain. The Lord will reward you. Mark my word. The Lord will reward you. Every soul that water will never go unrewarded. God bless you. We, we, see, we see you next week, same time, same place. Invite your friends to join us. Yes. Bye-bye.